Welcome back to Sonod Hex, everybody. Today we are interviewing a uh, potential player, Jarahawk. Are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, Jarahawk has been waiting uh, patiently for me to uh, get my butt in gear on um, uh, deleting all the cookies and stuff on my system uh, before I could actually run um, OBS with... Uh, Discord and um, Roll20 at the same time. So uh, thank you very much for your patience, Jarahawk. Um, okay, I've got a couple uh, questions for you. Um, I wrote these down a couple years ago, so they're, they're all standard questions that are basically like troubleshooting questions, pretty much. Um, okay, so how much time do you have for this interview tonight? I'm fine. Uh, you got like a couple hours or... Um, how, how much time do we need? Um, well, it depends. Uh, we could um, end up finishing the interview and then going right into uh, character generation if you feel up to it. So it could take anywhere from like half hour to... I don't know. Some characters take three hours to make, depending on how, how uh, complicated they are. Mm. Can we just do the interview and then do the character generation after that? Uh, sure, yeah. Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm guessing you got like a little less than an hour for the interview. Something okay. Like that. Okay. Um, how did you find out about Sonod Hicks? I saw the, the listing go on uh, Roll20. Oh, the LFG listing? Yeah, I applied uh, l last month. I think uh, I was just looking at at the at the forum. Okay, cool, cool. Um, how did you? Um, what was your impression of the the LFG listing for for Sonod Hex when you applied? Uh, it was fine. I I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, like I said, I was just. Uh, a lot of times I have free time and I, I look at, at listings and that sort of thing. And I, it said that it was, normally this is a paid game. And it said if you apply before the 27th of January or something like that, uh, you might be able to get in free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, today is the 27th, so I wanted to make sure and interview you before, you know, before I put it back to um, uh, pay to play. So, um yeah, if you if you get in, you're grandfathered in as a free player, so you, no worries about that. Um, are you still available on uh, Saturdays to play um, Solonaut Hex? Because we start yes. we start um, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we play five hours. Is that gonna work with your schedule? Yep, yeah, I'm Mountain Time, so for me that's 11 to five, I guess, or four. four okay. Or five. Okay, so you've got you've got the five hour window set up. Cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, if if you did make it into Solonaut Hex, how how long do you plan on staying? Um, I wasn't thinking about quitting anytime soon, so I guess uh, ongoing. I'm trying to think of the right word. Like as long as you can with your current schedule, or yeah, I mean as long as possible. Cool, um, cool. The reason I ask is because um, um, I've gotten like a lot of like high school uh, students and like um, college students that um, they'll come in, you know, during a certain time of the year, like. Uh, during summer vacation or during spring break or, you know, around the holidays or something because they have, you know, free times on the weekends then, but then, you know, <clears throat> push comes to shove and they got to study for a test. And first thing they do is, well, selling out of is out or, um, recently since COVID started, um, there's a lot of people in like the medical industry, 
um, that have started working on Saturdays when they recently, or when they when they normally only worked, you know, Monday through Friday. So that's that's you know stuff like that. That's the reason why um, why I ask questions like that. Um, so I'm I'm glad that you that that you would uh, uh, stay as long as you could. Um, <coughs> If you don't mind me asking, how does your uh, headset or microphone connect with your computer? Is it like a wired headset, like a gaming headset with a, a microphone um, that goes over your, uh, like, to your mouth and has, like, a wire that connects to your computer? Or is it, like, built into your laptop? Or how does that work? Okay, so it's a wired headset. Um, uh, basically, I play on my computer... And I do the Discord on um, my I, my iPad, so it's plugged into my iPad. Oh, okay. A, it's a wired head. It's a wired headset, not a Bluetooth though. Wired heads, okay. Um, does the is the microphone um, the actual iPad microphone, or is it the microphone on the headset? It's on the headset. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Um. <clears throat> Uh, and then, so, uh, the reason I ask is because uh, a lot of people, um, I've seen try to play with, uh, uh, without a headset. Like they'll have, uh, their, their laptop set up with a speaker that plays really loud, you know, and, um, you can hear cause the microphone is built into the laptop next to the speaker. You can hear everyone talking to each other and it feeds back through their microphone. Uh, which gets pretty annoying. So usually with a traditional headset, that isn't the issue. Um, so <laughs> I'm I'm glad you actually have a headset and and all that, and the the microphone's built into it. Um, that's not absolutely a requirement. We do have one player that um, I think he doesn't use a headset at all. He's uh, he's got a, a laptop setup, but he's really really good at um, push to talk on discord um so his uh his microphone tends not to feed back uh people's voices because he kind of waits till everyone stops talking before he talks so um it's not absolutely required to play sonotex you know to have to have a, a headset but it is a plus um okay so uh, if you don't mind me asking, how does your computer connect to your router? Is it like uh, wirelessly connected or wired? Or do you have to go through uh, uh, like a, a wireless Wi-Fi that's like five, five rooms away? Or how does that work? Okay, so I use uh, Xfinity, which is Comcast. Yeah. For my internet. Oh, okay. Your ISP. And my, right. my, my router is... Uh, is plugged in but the house has uh internet and so i i am on a wireless network uh, for my house yeah does it ever um does it ever lag or anything like because how how far away is the antenna that you use for your wi-fi from where you uh from where you game it's in the next room i'm in, I'm in a, a bedroom and my my router's in the um the main family room. Okay, so it goes through like one a wall, signal signal goes through a wall. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you ever have issues where, um, like you can't hear people or, uh, Discord kind of skips out from um from low signal strengths to your no. to your router? Okay. So it's a f uh, fairly strong signal from your router, even though it goes through one wall. Oh yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. good. Okay, that's a relief. Because uh, sometimes um, I've gotten players where, like, let's say, uh, their uh, their family router is like downstairs in the rec room, you know, with the family PC or whatever, and they'll be <clears throat> up in their bedroom on their laptop in bed, right? And then when they talk, you can barely hear what they say because it kind of skips out because their signal strength for their router is kind of weak. So I'm glad that's not the issue with you. Um, all right. Uh, how does your... Um, okay, so 
Yeah. How does your router connect with your modem? That, that's not a wireless connection, is it? Or does it go straight to your modem through like a, a wire? So my um, my modem is plugged in, like I say, and my computer and my and my my iPad, if you will, they they both are on this wireless network. Okay, so it's like um, one of those uh, Xfinity Voice over IP modems that has a built-in router. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. I I gotcha. own it. Okay. Uh, I don't rent it from them. I own it. But yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so uh, just so you know, sometimes the signal strength for the uh, the Wi-Fi does tend to get slowed down on those um, combo uh, modem uh, routers. But uh, that's usually for like um, uh, like when you're when you're playing. Uh, like video games and you're on like a network with a big you know amount of people and um you're uh like streaming you know on twitch at the same time then it'll it'll slow down but you should be fine usually those especially the newer ones that xfinity gives out um they're a little better than the ones from uh like the 2012-2013 era. <clears throat> um, okay, so your modem connects to the internet because you got uh, uh, voice over IP. Uh, your ISP is um, Comcast. Okay, so that's pretty much all your hardware stuff out of the way. Um, so have you played D&D before? Yes. Uh, second edition or... I started playing D&D &D in 1990. 1990. And, uh, and it was first edition D&D. Uh, &D. I started playing second in 91, 92. I was in college. Nice. Oh, college in 91, 92. Okay. All right. Um, have you played, like, the newer versions of D&D? &D? I the... played 3.5. Uh, 3. Uh, well... 3.0 and DNA changed to 3.5 and I played Pathfinder and I played 5e. What was your impression of those compared to um, second edition? Um, I mean, there's things about 3.5 that I like. Uh, there's not much about uh, Pathfinder or, or 5e that I like better than than 2e. I, I mean, the main thing they have going for them. Well, at least uh, I can tell is the the skills. Um, skills are hard to come by in two E. And but as far as the game, I, pre I mean, I prefer to play uh, first or second. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what did you prefer about um, uh, third edition? You said there was uh, something about third edition that you liked uh, better than second. I like the feats. The, the feats? Okay. Cool. Um, how does all those um, uh, prestige classes work in third? Um, well, the thing about uh, third and Pathfinder is that you, at every level you choose a class. Yeah. So if, if you have the prerequisites, choosing a... a uh, prestige class just like choosing to, to not take take a fighter level this level you know you know, like if, if you take three levels in fighter and two levels in rogue and now you're a fifth level character when you get another level if you qualify for a prestige class you just take that oh okay okay cool um have you ever dm'd uh D, &D? i have back in college back in college i ran D, &D uh second ed i read i ran uh Marvel superheroes and I read Palladium Fantasy. Palladium but Fantasy, cool. But I haven't done any of that in a number of years. Yeah. Uh, I I'm very uh, thankful to people who are willing to run, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I always thank my DM, uh, you know, after a session for running because 
it, it, it brings me all kinds of pleasure, but I, I know how difficult it is. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, almost like a part-time job. Like, like, you know, you put in, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight to, to, you know, or more extra hours a week when you're not, not even playing the game just to make, you know, monster sheets, make maps, make NPCs, um, <clears throat> roll up magical items and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I can, I can, I concur. Uh, with that wholeheartedly, <clears throat> what um what what made you decide to stop uh, DMing? Is it just just the amount of time that goes into it, or man, um, the last time I did a, a actual game, I had uh, maybe five players, and two of the players got into a fight about something that had nothing to do with the game, unfortunately, and um, uh. I, and I just didn't want to deal with that anymore. I mean, basically. I, I was gonna tell one of them they couldn't play anymore. <laughs> they couldn't. Yeah. They couldn't. They couldn't both play. So I, so I, I stopped play, I stopped running it all together. And my another one of my friends, uh, he always makes fun of me about. It. He's like, "You had, that was your chance to, to put your foot down, and you didn't do it." And I was like, "Yeah," but that's why I stopped running any games at all. Because um, like one guy was jealous of the other guy for talking to his wife. Oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. Basically. So. Well. They were both. They, they were both my friends. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I mean, it was. It was obviously somebody I should have told not to, not to play, but I didn't want to do that. So. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Especially in a face to face game when when you know everyone's in the same room, and you know stuff like that comes up the game table. Maybe, you know, I, you're probably right to stay out of it, because. <laughs> I mean, choosing, you know, sides and in, in something like that, that could be, I mean, that could be like a death sentence almost. Some people are willing, willing to kill for, for stuff like that. So I, I, I think you did the right thing, um, by not getting between them at least. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's rough. Two, two players interested in the same, same woman in real life, <laughs> man. <clears throat> okay. Um, how long ago was that? Oh, uh, no, that was back in 94. 94, wow. That's been almost 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and, uh, okay, so um, have you uh, used Roll20 before in other games? Yeah, I started playing Roll20. Uh, they had a Roll20 con, and I got an invite to it back in 2018. Yeah. And that's, how I that's how I discovered the site, and uh, after that, I got into a... A one e game, and then I started, you know, trying other games, basically. Yeah. Um, what's the longest you've been in one game? Uh, I was in one about five months. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, just so you know, a lot of the players in this game, um, they've been in for, um, like some of them two years, some of them uh almost four years I think so awesome. it's yeah it's a long long running game um, everyone does start at level one but because of where the group is at right now experience wise um, people who start at one don't stay level one for long like even usually not even longer than one session and it usually comes down to the point where... Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Gary Gygax's rule where you can only gain uh, one level per session? And if you if you earned enough experience points to gain second level, uh, your, your uh, two levels, um, you end the session at one experience point below uh, the second level that you would gain. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm familiar with that rule. I thought, that's, that, I thought that was just the rule. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's okay. it's optional. It's optional. Um, I do use it, and um, more often than not, uh, that's what happens to people's level one characters. Uh, so you're pretty much guaranteed to be level three by your third session. I mean, it's it's really hard not to uh, in this game. And uh, um, there's currently we have a guy that just he just started about. Uh, four, I want to say four weeks ago, 
Uh, and he's like a thousand experience points from level five. So, you know, four sessions, almost level five. I think that's pretty decent uh, progression for, you know, a, a group that's... Um, their their average level is probably about level eight right now, eight or, eight or nine. Okay. So the highest level person is, of course, a thief. Uh, she's level 12, almost 13. Uh, we have a... Uh, thief mage that's like 11 12 or something like that um, we have a fighter that I think is level 10 um, a wizard that I think is level 10 um, we have a monk that hasn't started playing yet he's starting uh, this weekend and then um, we have a berserker fighter uh, that is is almost level five. And he's he's only been playing for about four weeks, so um, I think that's everybody. I might be missing someone. Okay. But um, yeah, so uh, you know you'll be making a level one character, but don't worry, like you're gonna be level. I can pretty much guarantee you'll be level ten within a year, and then. Um, probably by then the average level will be like 12 or 13 and then you'll be pretty much uh, matched up with the rest of the party by the time they get into their you know 200,000 levels or whatever you know where um, all the classes above a certain level they have to get the same exact amount every time to gain a level you'll probably you'll probably be like a couple couple levels behind the the highest character uh, once that starts to happen <clears throat> uh, let's see so you played roll 20 before do you have any um, have you had any uh, bad experiences with roll 20 before yeah I've had some bad experiences <laughs> it's the internet yeah uh, I, I mean I've had um, I've had someone basically want to tell me how to play the character. Um, and when I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do, he booted me. Um, mm. Pretty sad. I thought it was pretty sad. It was pretty juvenile. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, so, you, know, you don't get along with everybody. Yeah. And, so, and unlike tabletop, you know, usually if you don't like somebody, you don't have to stick around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially with, uh, with, with online games, that is true. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't force people to play a certain way, um, because that's not really what the alignment system is about. I mean, there's, there are, um, classes that, um, require certain alignments, but, um, it's pretty hard to like actually uh, go through an alignment change because you have to I mean if you're a good character obviously you do one evil thing that's not going to make you become evil right uh, like it's not it's because it's not habitual but um, like a paladin they have really strict rules about um, you know, like even lying could be considered evil to them. And then they, like, if they, if they tell a lie, then they have to do, you know, penance or whatever for their, you know, they have to atone for their atonement. sin. Atonement. Yeah. 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 Atonement. So, yeah. If you yeah. do one chaotic act as a paladin, yeah. you become a normal fighter. Yeah. You're no yeah. longer a paladin. Right. So. Oh, this wasn't an alignment issue. I'll, I'll tell you what it was. It was a, a 3.5 game. Yeah. And um, my, I was playing a fighter, and uh, I, I wanted to use daggers. And the guy told me I should use, I should use uh, an axe or, or a heavy sword, and I should wear arm, uh, heavy armor. Wait, the, it, <laughs> the DM was telling you what weapon to use? Yes. And wow. he booted me because I, because I said, well, let's just let's just play and, and see he said well you're not going to survive mm. um, if, if, if you're going to you're going to play that style of a fighter 
And I said, yeah. well, let's, can we, can we at least try it? And, yeah. And, and the answer was obviously no, because the next thing I knew I was, I was, I was booted out of that Discord and out of that. Oh my God. Out of that Roll20. I so mean. I said, hey, that's manipulation. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, uh, that sounds, that sounds like a teenage kid to me. Like, <laughs> that's, was it a teenager? Was it? Nope. Nope. Oh, he was man. a 30 year, 30 year old man. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I, mean, he, he, I mean, he was younger than me, obviously, but he yeah. was, he was, a, he was a, grown, a, a grown, supposedly adult person. So Damn. It was, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I was looking forward to it, too. That's, I guess that's why I'm still thinking about it. I'm looking forward to playing. It's like, that's, man, this is going to be great. Yeah, that's funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of different styles of um, character in this in this game. There, I mean, there are times where I um, advise people, like I don't I don't tell them like, hey, like in this situation you should use your longsword. You know, I don't say stuff like that, but. Um, like, you know, a couple sessions after something happens, sometimes I might say, well, you know, remember when you tried to backstab with your short bow and, you know, you weren't do doing very much damage to the, to that giant. Well, you could have used, probably could have used backstab with your long sword and like probably, uh, done, you know, 50 plus damage and killed him in one shot with a death blow or something, you know, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll say stuff like that, but I don't, I don't tell people before they even get a chance to play their character, you know, you have to use uh, axes and a shield or, you know, that, that's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'll, I'll advise people. I'm not afraid to offer advice to people uh, about um, like tactical stuff. But I don't like force people how to build, you know, how to build their character. That's that's completely up to you. That's ridiculous. All right. Um, I'm sorry that happened to you, man. That really sucks. Um, all right. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you're in your experience with Roll Twenty. Have you have you like ever written your own macros or anything like that? Like technical stuff for your characters. Well, I wouldn't say I written my own macro. I've I've had people share them, and I and I and I have my favorites uh, that I like to use. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, you know, and for the and for the games like uh. Like the three point five and up, they're they're much easier to, to do because you, you just basically just doing a short shortcut for die rolls. Yeah. Yeah, that's um pretty much, uh, Solonaut Hex is is pretty much that like. Um, almost all of the character functions are um, automated with macros. So even to like roll initiative, to roll attacks, to roll saving throws, uh, to roll um, uh, like uh, uh, like checks, like uh, ability checks, or you know like a strength check, or like an open open doors check, or something like that, or dex check. Or proficiency checks, or um, like thief skill checks too. It's all it's all automated with uh, um, with macros. So, and there's a lot of the classes that I've um, automated as well, like um, uh, like the wizard. Most of the most of the wizard stuff, like uh, you know, chance to learn a spell and rolling. Um, uh, pages for your, your spells you, you learn um, is automated so you know you don't have to like sit there and pull out your dice roller <clears throat> and then you know roll a percentile for you know whether or not you fail to learn the spell and then a, a d6 minus one plus level the spell for spell pages it's all built into one macro and it'll tell you you know you successfully learned um, the shield spell and it takes four pages in your in your traveling spell book it's it's pretty cool um, I've been working on this campaign oh, go ahead no that's very nice I was just gonna say it. that's yeah very nice yeah it's um, every once in a while I, I revamp 
the different systems. Like currently I'm doing um, a lot of the ability checks I'm, or, and skill checks. I'm, I'm revamping. I actually, I already finished the ability checks. Um, so I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, the player's option, optional um, ability checks rules, but it's uh, for every um, for every stat point above no, it's every, it's like every two stat points above um, 14, your character gets an additional d20 roll for their um, ability checks. And it's, not only is it ability checks, it's any check on, um, on the abilities table. So that's uh, Ben Bar's Lift Gates, it's, um, uh, you know, chance to open locked doors, chance to open regular doors, strength checks, you know, dex checks, ability checks, all that stuff. Um, so it makes it easier for people with higher stats to, to pass. And then it's normal difficulty for people with a normal stat, like, you know, 10 or 12 or something or or, and then it gets even more difficult, obviously, if you're lower than average. But, um, yeah, we do, we do use that optional rule. So if you ever see someone, you know, especially yourself, say you, you give your, say, you, I don't know what class you're interested in playing, but if, if you had like an 18 strength or something, um, I think that's like, uh, if you tried to roll a strength check, it would roll three times and tell you how many successes out of, three you know and all you need obviously is one to pass your strength check okay that's pretty cool yeah so that that's that's a it's a new optional rule and i mean it's not new obviously because second edition is hella old but um it's it's from uh uh player's option um and i i thought that it was a better rule because I know how damn hard it is to pass a lot of those checks and obvious I, I think I think it's kind of obvious that it, it's a little more difficult than it needs to be when when you have high stats you know to roll a strength check and pass like if you have 18 strengths you I don't think it's fair to have a you know a 10% chance to fail like you actually get three rolls now, so you have what like a three percent chance to fail or something like that. Something with something like that. But uh, the reason they did that is because um, you know the eighteen strength fighter walks up to the door and tries to open it and fails, and then like the ten ten strength wizard walks up to the door, tries to open it, and boom. The door opens. I mean, that can still happen this way, but it's way less likely. And um, high high stat characters are much more heroic now because of that um, uh, that system. So I hope you enjoy that uh, aspect of the game. Uh, I don't know anybody who uses that optional rule yet, uh, so I think it's pretty um, um, pretty novel. Uh, and I'm kind of proud that I use that. Um, okay. So I think that this, uh, interview has gone pretty well. What kind of character do you want to make? Now, before you answer that question, I just want you to know that, uh, Solonaut Hex is a game about, uh, you, uh, playing the character that you always wanted to play, no matter how OP it is, as long as it's uh, from published material, right? One of the one of the <laughs> books, one of the books in my in my selection. Um, so nothing out of Dragon Magazine or Dungeon Magazine or any, any of those magazines. It's got to be from you know Player's Option, DM's Option, uh, one of the Splat books, um, other than. The fighting monk is obsolete because the monk class obviously is in uh, um, player's option. 
The Barbarian uh, kit is obsolete because th we have the Barbarian's Handbook. And then there was one other one that I don't remember that's obsolete. Um, uh, the, the, sh the Shaman, because the Shaman is in the Barbarian's Handbook. That's right. Uh, so other than those three things. Oh, and there are only a couple races from second edition that I don't allow. The number one is uh, the beast man because it's only supposed to be like, you can only encounter beast men in Greyhawk. Like they're in regular D and D beast men don't exist. I've done, I've done the research. Beast men don't exist in regular D and D. They're not on any encounter tables that I've seen. Um, and uh, you know they're a pretty cool race from from the uh, humanoids handbook, but they just don't exist in Sauna Uh Number two is uh, Mulls from uh, uh, what's it, Dark Sun. It's supposed to be a Dark Sun race only. Number three is the the those half giant people from Dark Sun, because that's supposed to be a Dark Sun race only. Uh, and then there was one of uh, th the dinosaur people from Forgotten Realms. The Sorials. The Sorials, yeah. Th those are Forgotten Realms people only, because you, know, you just can't encounter them anywhere else. They're not on any encounter tables. That's why I don't use those uh, races. But everything, okay. else, everything else is represented in uh, encounter tables somewhere. Like you can you can play as um, uh, uh, an, an Azamon if you want to because you can encounter Azamon on I think it's the astral plane. Um, you can encounter most of them, or uh, encounter them in uh, most of the uh, uh, what's it called the uh, the the elemental planes. The, because there's elemental devas or whatever, and then there's astral devas on the astral plane and all that. So uh, those celestial races are are allowed. From uh, there's a book called uh, Warriors of Heaven, and I allow oh. I allow all those races, even even the ones that are like, oh my god, this is so powerful, even those ones, they're allowed. Okay. Uh, well, my, go ahead. My preference is to play a human. Uh, so okay. Um, and it's, it's, I guess you're probably aware that, uh, that the reason why humans originally had no level limits was because guy guys wanted the game to be uh, human centric. Yeah. Um, when I first started playing first edition, one of the first campaigns I played in, I was playing a, um, a dwarf and I actually got penalized because my dwarf was getting along with the elf in the party and we had, we had just started the campaign and the, the DM said and he pulled out the book and he showed me where elves and dwarves have antipathy towards one another. Yeah. He, says, that's just, he says that's just poor role playing. And I said what if I were a human? He's like you wouldn't have got penalized. <laughs> <laughs> and so for the most part whatever possible unless the campaign it doesn't make sense for the campaign I choose to play humans, and people, and, and you know what? And that's another thing. I was trying to get into a game uh, on Roll Twenty, and I told the guy I wanted to play a human fighter, and the guy said you can't be a human because you'll get bored, <laughs> and and, and oh, you'll okay. be under, and you'll be underpowered, and so the the choice was either to, to play something else or not play. So I just didn't play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, wow. It's one of those, one, one of those things where. What people tell you what, what you what you would like to do, or what you would want to do, and I said, "What?" I know. That? Yeah, that's I ridiculous. Like yeah. But if you but want to play was, human, I have no no qualms. Where everybody was playing something powerful, like a a tiefling or a, a you know, like you say, a diva or whatever. It yeah. was one of those games, though. So it was like, why would you want to be a human? It's like, why wouldn't I want to be a human? Humans, cool. humans are cool. Yeah. Uh, as far as what I would play. Um, Honestly, uh, I would like to see what I would roll. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to, if, if I'd have the stats to see or anything, um, but I'd like to see what I would roll before I, I made a, a decision if that's okay. But more than likely, yeah. I always choose to play humans. Okay. Pop. Yeah. Um, do you have time to roll up a character right now? 
Sure, let me go and do that. Okay. Um, I will invite you to uh, the campaign, and then um, I'll also uh, restart the stream for character generation. Okay. Um, so let me add you to the game right now. I'm going to shut down the stream.